All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, we're going to be talking about The Fellowship of the Ring, J.R.R. Tolkien. Not necessarily a review, but just a discussion. So we're going to get into spoilers. But imagine anybody that's watching this video has probably read the book a dozen times and watched the movies a dozen times. So we're just going to go over how much I love this story and, how, and, and some of my history with J.R.R. Tolkien, how I started reading Tolkien, some of the artwork I actually did for Tolkien Enterprises, and all of that combined. Just, just what a great, great book it was, and sort of like the, it's like the king of epic fantasy. It's almost like every epic fantasy draws its inspiration from something in this book. And we're going to talk about it. So let's just get started with the fact that I've got Gandalf's sword over here and Aragorn's sword. So we're off to a great start. We're off to a great start. Let's also go over the covers. I collect, if you followed my channel, you know that I collect different versions of Lord of the Rings. I've got collector's editions and this, that, and the other. These are my different versions that I have of the Fellowship of the Ring, specifically. This is the first copy that I ever bought. This, was the, this is the exact copy that I bought in the Safeway supermarket in Richfield, Utah, when I was just a young 12, 13 year old boy in the 1980s. And I still have it. I read this thing probably twice a year, all through high school. And then I've reread it and reread it. And it's still, you know, I keep my books in mint condition. But I love this. Of all the covers I'm going to show you of the different versions of Fellowship of the Ring that I've got, this one still remains my favorite one. This is a Daryl K. Sweet painting. You might recognize the Daryl K. Sweet name because Daryl K. Sweet also painted all the Wheel of Time covers. I love this cover. I've also got this cover here. This one's pretty cool and simple. I love this John Jude Palancar cover. Uh, John Jude Palancar was an illustrator. He did the uh, Aragon series by Christopher Paolini, and he's done a lot of of the book covers over time. This is a little leather-bound version that of the Fellowship of the Ring that I have. And when we review the two, and when we discuss the two towers and the Return of the King, you know, down the road, I will show you all of my covers of those two. This is um, another version I've got with the Alan Lee painting. Uh, Alan Lee actually worked as uh, one of the main designers of the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings films. So, like that. And another great collector's edition I've got from Great Britain. This is the British version collector's edition of The Fellowship of the Ring. Another great Alan Lee illustration wraparound. Just super dope. Super dope. So while we are talking about the artwork... For Lord of the Rings, we're going to talk about the artwork first, and then we'll get into the story. But back when I was in college, some of you may remember J.R.R. Tolkien Enterprises doing this collectible card game. You know, Magic the Gathering got very popular, and I did a lot of Magic the Gathering card illustrations. A lot of you may know that already. If you followed my channel, I mention it quite a bit. I used to be an illustrator back in the day, back when I was in college. I did Magic the Gathering cards, and I also did... A lot of these J.R.R. Tolkien cards for the Lord of the Rings. For instance, I and one of the things that I loved about doing this artwork is this comp the Tolkien Enterprises would send me scenes from the different books and ha say, "Study this scene and do a little illustration." So I did the. Um, that's an illustration of Bilbo Baggins at the uh, party when he turns 111 years old, right before he puts the ring on. Here is um, Gandalf and some elves. Here is an uh, elf over the abyss. You know, all these cards meant something in the game. I don't know. Some more stuff. Uh, let's see, what's this? The, 
the Black Numenorians, the Black Numenorians. I know that the... I don't even know if you can even see that, if it's even in focus or not, but whatever. Doing the best we can, doing the best we can. We got some orcs. One of my favorite ones that I did was Tom Bombadil. I did the Tom Bombadil card. See if we can get that focused. I don't think this thing's going to focus nothing. Nope, now I just screwed everything up. All right, folks, I am, I, as you can see, I am really, really good at this tech stuff. Let's talk about some of the other things. The, the Lord of the Rings, let's just get into the story. You know, we got Bilbo Baggins. Have, have you talked, have, the Brothers Hildebrandt, right? They got some great illustrations. This is how I got into the Lord of the Rings. When I was a young junior high school in, and I was interested in art, I loved these Lord of the Rings illustration, like this is the Fellowship of the Ring illustration, and I and I loved the Hildebrandt books and the Hildebrandt brothers here. That's Eowyn and the Nazgul. The Hildebrandt brothers were the ones that turned me on to Lord of the Rings. Smaug, look at that great painting of Smaug, and so I eventually ended up buying the books basically because I loved these paintings so much, Gandalf and the Balrog, and um. The Fellowship of the Ring was the start of that, you know? So let's talk about what we love about the Fellowship of the Ring. So the Fellowship of the Ring, folks. Like I said, it's the quintessential fantasy novel. Um, every fantasy is novel is, is based off of this. Mine, uh, Tad Williams, George R.R. R. Martin... Everybody, everybody that's written a fantasy novel has pulled some inspiration from... This, whether it's the wizards, the young halflings, the dwarves, the elves, I mean, Dungeons and Dragons is, is based around the Fellowship of the Ring and that cast of characters, the cast of nine going into the Mines of Moria and, and doing, I mean, that is where the Gary G Gygax, the guy that started Dungeons and Dragons, that's where he got the idea for Dungeons and Dragons was that exploration of the mines of Moria and, 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 and just guys with swords like this and elves with bows and arrows and, 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 and burly dwarves with axes and little halflings doing their little halfling thing and Gandalf with his staff and his wizard powers. I mean, that is a dungeon crawl. That is the very first dungeon crawl we ever got. But before we even got to the dungeon crawl, just let's talk about all the iconic things that happened in the Lord of the Rings. First of all, we've got just the Shire itself, just an idyllic setting based upon the English moors, you know, just like southern England where people just want to, you know, the hobbits, they're just sort of like farmers. They just want to live in peace, do their farms, read their books, collect their little knickknacks, live in their little hovels, their little little hobbit holes. And that's all they really want to do. And that's that represents the everyman. That represents all of us. That's it's really all we want is peace and quiet in our life. And then comes Gandalf, and he introduces, of course, in The Hobbit, he takes Bilbo off on an adventure. And we'll review The Hobbit one of these days. Uh, but he, he, he gets Frodo involved, this, this, the nephew of Bilbo. He gets Frodo involved, and he's like, this ring, this ring that your uncle found in, in the previous book, The Hobbit, well, your uncle found a ring, right? And it's a supposedly this dark magic talisman that's going to destroy the world, or, or we need to destroy it. And so they're right then we're getting the everyman thrust into a conundrum: Do I help? Do I help destroy this ring, or do I not? And then they go off. He, him, Frodo, and Samwise, of course, go off on the adventure. And then we get the, we get the other hobbits, Merry and Pippin, come along with them. And then we get Strider. But before we get Strider, we get these guys in the dark cloaks. We get these, we get the ring wraiths, iconic, the iconic ring wraiths in the dark cloaks chasing after them. And every fantasy novel since then, including mine, has had some baddie, bad guy in a dark cloak and a dark horse chasing our people. And whether they're wraiths or phantoms or just anything, Trollocs or whatever it is in the... Myrtle in the, Mur I think they're Myrtle in the uh, Wheel of Time. But anyway, every, every, everybody uses these and they're just great, iconic things. And we get Strider with his sword. 
Well, anyway, you know, the sword, the so the Strider sword is like it's a broken sword, but we, we we get that. And and Strider shows up and he's like this guide, this ranger, this outdoorsman, this mountain man, this this person that's just competent in every way. It contrasts so well with our seemingly incompetent hobbits that are out on this adventure, and he guides them to Rivendale, and then we get to meet all the other great characters like Elrond, and Gandalf is back in the scene, and then Legolas and Gimli and Boromir, and they decide to go, they, 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 they discuss, and the Council of Elrond is another great iconic scene where they discuss what's going on in this world and the dangers we face and how are we going to solve this and, and and again just so iconic and so memorable and when you're reading it as a youngster or even as an adult you just the way that tolkien describes the world and those scenes and the danger that they face you just you're sweating your palms are sweating and it's just guys sitting around a table discussing stuff but the stuff they're discussing is absolute 100 percent high adventure they're talking about Gollum, these creatures that dwell in caves. They're talking about the Ringwraiths and the Dark Lord Sauron and the, and, the, and the Eye, the Lidless Eye, the Lidless Eye. You know, the, and, and, and you just like, oh my gosh, you just, you want them to save Middle Earth because you've already spent like half a book inside Middle Earth and you just want it to be saved because it's just, just such a glorious place to spend your time. And then they go off onto their adventure or their dungeon crawl, where they the nine the, the fellowship of the ring, the nine the nine characters, they go, they set off on a hike, and everybody who's been young, we've all done that. We've all set off on a hike with our friends into the whether it's just along a stream bank, or if you're in the city, maybe you just go to a different part of the city, or if you're in the Boy Scouts in the mountains, you go into the mountains. But everybody has went off onto a semi-journey with their friends, and they know what that's like. And now we've got the coolest friends in the Fellowship of the Ring. We've got the coolest friends we could possibly have. We've got our hobbits. We've got Gandalf, our leader. We've got Aragorn, the tough guy. We've got Boromir, Boromir an even tougher guy. We've got Gimli and Legolas, who are super tough in their own ways. I mean, Legolas is a, is the iconic elf. Just he's faster and more athletic than everybody else. He's got his bow. Gimli is just like this stocky, burly, battle axe wielding dude with a beard. And then it's just it's a company of guys that we want to travel with. Now, in retrospect, you know, maybe if Tolkien was writing the story nowadays, he would have included some female characters, but we can't, you know, fault him for what he did when he did it. It is what it is, and but we still love it. We still love it. And there are some strong female characters coming up in the story, you know, in the Two Towers and the and the Return of the King and stuff. But, at the, you know, they go through this dungeon, the Mines of Moria, and we're just, like, gripping our seat because everything in the mines just seems so dangerous and foreign to us. And there's holes, and there's mines, and the caverns are endless, and you could just... It's like being in a maze, a labyrinth, a puzzle maze, and you just are wondering if they're going to make it out of this thing because, you know, there's you got Pippin throwing things down into holes and making noises. You've got orcs crawling all over the ceilings, and you've got trolls... And then you end up with the Balrog, and then you end up with the bridge over the chasm, which is such another iconic, iconic thing, the bridge over the chasm. And then we get to Lothlorien, where the elves live, you know? We've got, we've, we've, we've went through Moria, and we've suffered so much devastating loss, and we get to where the elves live. And I remember one of these cards I painted was called A Gift of Three Golden Hairs, I don't think I have it, but it was when, it was when uh, Galadriel was snipping her hair off to give to Gimli, and I did that painting, and they made me study. They made me study that scene. The Tolkien Enterprises sent me that scene and said, study every word of that scene and paint Galadriel giving Gimli three golden hairs. And I did it, and it was, it was, it was a great little painting. I don't think I've got it in this group, but anyway, it's not that the focus. I mean, I don't even know if the focus is working anymore. I think we're all, you know, I'm not technically savvy, guys. I'm not technically savvy. Anyway, back to the Fellowship of the Ring. We get to the scenes 
on the raft. <laughs> and I've been whitewater river rafting a lot, and I had done that a lot. And, and when you're on whitewater river rafting, and um, you do feel like you're on, on an adventure. And so when they were rafting down that river and seeing the big stone statues that were along the side, I've been rafting along the Green River and the Colorado River when you're rafting through these narrow canyons and these massive cliffs rise up on either side. So I knew exactly, when I was reading those scenes, I knew exactly how that felt. I knew exactly how that felt. And then we get to the end of the book where Boromir sort of has a moment of weakness and wants to take the one ring from Frodo. You know, so far, the ring hasn't been affecting Frodo much at all, other than it turns him invisible, and Gandalf has said, you know, avoid using it. But then we get how dangerous this ring is right at the end of the book when Boromir has that moment of weakness and tries to take the ring from Frodo, and then the fellowship all goes, everything goes ass over teapot at that point, and then we're left on a cliffhanger, and we, and it's just marvelous, and we can't wait to get to the two towers. And so I just wanted to do, it's not necessarily a review of the Fellowship of the Ring. It's more of a discussion and what I love about it. But if I was to review this, you know I would give it 10 out of 10, because this thing is dope!